Do you live for Christ every day? Is he first in your life? Is he your savior as, and, as well as Lord? Because when you come to Christ, you must come to him as Lord and Savior. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. All right, the first thing is repentance. You say, well, I, don't, I, I really don't think I could change my way of living. No, you cannot. I agree with you. Only God can help you change. He has to help you to repent. And then the second thing is by faith you receive him. By faith you open your heart and receive him. Just like I'm standing here on this platform. Now, this is the first time I've ever been on this platform. Now, I didn't stop and examine the platform to see if it would hold a man. I believe that the people that built it, built it strong enough to hold a man. That's, the, that's what faith is. You put your total commitment, your total weight on Jesus Christ and him alone for your salvation. And then the third thing is to obey him. To obey him. You must be willing to obey him. Jesus said, if you're not willing to deny self, take up a cross and follow me, you cannot be my follower. What did he mean by taking up a cross? Jesus was going to die. It was a place of the execution of criminals. Very unpopular. He would be persecuted, lashed, and spiked and nailed to death. Will you be willing to do that? That means you go back to your place of work and back to your home and start applying Christ in your daily life. Are you willing to do that? To let such a dramatic change take place in your life? That's the reason he said in that previous chapter, count the cost. Because coming to Christ is serious business. But there are people here tonight that are not sure of how you stand before Christ. You may be a member of the best church in town. You might have been baptized or confirmed or whatever. And you may be a good person. But down deep inside, you don't have that assurance that Christ is yours. And you'd like to have that total and complete assurance. I'm going to ask you to do something tonight that we've seen people do on every continent and many countries of the world and recently everywhere in Japan by the thousands. I'm going to ask you to get up out of your seat and come and stand in front of the platform and say by coming, I want Christ in my heart. And why do I ask you to come publicly? You know, when my wife and I was here tonight, got married, we did it publicly in front of witnesses. Jesus died on the cross publicly for you. He hung there naked in front of that crowd for you and took your shame and your sin. Every person he called in the New Testament, he called publicly. Public. There was a reason for it. A spiritual reason and a psychological reason. I'm asking you to come publicly and say, I will identify with Christ tonight. I want to know. I want my sins forgiven. I want to know I'm going to heaven. You get up and come. We're going to wait while you come right now from everywhere. And after you've all come, I'm going to say a word to you and have a prayer with you, give you some literature to help you in your Christian life, and you can get up and go back and join your friends. But you come and make sure about this commitment tonight. Quickly, we're going to wait while you come. Some of you have come to receive Christ into your heart, perhaps for the first time. Really receive it. Others of you are coming to rededicate your life. However you are coming, I want to assure you that he loves you. Some of you have different emotions as you come. The night I came in a group about like this, I thought I was a fool. I stood there saying, well, why in the world am I down there? Never dreaming that I was starting on a great new adventure that would last not only through my lifetime, but throughout eternity with God. You can't take it all in in one evening and... All the decisions are not made in one evening. The first step is taken tonight. Some of you smile and some of you have tears. It's not the matter of the emotion. It's the matter of the total life commitment. If you feel like tears, let them come. If you feel like smiling, smile. Whatever you feel like doing. But there are tears of repentance, the Bible teaches. And I'm sure some of you have those. Tears in your heart.
over past sins. But you can forget those past sins now because you see God has forgotten them. That's the marvelous thing we're taught in the Bible about God. He has the ability to forget, to erase from the tape record every sin you've ever committed so that it's no longer there held against you. That's what Christ did at the cross. Now, there are four things from now on that are very important. First is to read your Bible every day. That helps you to grow. You cannot grow spiritually without studying the Scriptures. Now, we're going to give you a part of the Bible tonight. We're going to give you a thing called Living in Christ. And you'll see in the front of it the Gospel of John. Now, you can start reading that tonight, and then you're going to find another little thing that will be very helpful, the commitment you made tonight. What is it spiritually? You'll see the diagrams and so forth that will help you understand what you've done tonight. That will be given to you in just a moment. Then you'll find some Scripture verses perforated in here. You can cut those out and carry them in your pocketbook during the day and memorize them. You ought to have all of these memorized in the next few days so that when you're tempted, as you're going to be tempted, Satan's not going to let you alone, you quote Scripture. When Jesus was tempted, he didn't argue with the devil. He just quoted the Bible. There's one thing the devil cannot stand, and that's quoted Scripture. So that's the reason it's important. Now, as you read the Gospel of John, you will not be able to understand everything you're reading all the time, of course. But you keep reading till you come to a verse that speaks to you, and that will be God's Word for you. Stop and meditate on it. Then try to apply it in your life. Now, the second thing is to pray. Now, you say, Billy, I really don't know how to pray. I guess I've prayed once in a while. I'm about to have an automobile wreck. And I said, Lord, save me or something like that. But uh, how do I pray? Well, first of all, you won't be able to pray like a clergyman to start with. You just say, Lord, I love you. That's a prayer. Lord, I need your help. That's a prayer. And then you begin to talk to God just as though you would talk to your best friend and tell them all your victories and joys and happiness and tell them your troubles and your problems and your needs. He'll answer your prayers. Pray them in the name of Jesus according to the will of God. And then the third thing, witness for Christ. How do you witness? Well, you witness for the way you live. You go home tonight and you have a new attitude in the home. There's love that dominates your life. That's the great way you witness is by love. And you witness to people. We're a pluralistic society with many ethnic groups trying to live under one roof. And it's not easy. Make friends with people of another ethnic group or another race or another color. And show your love. Show your love to the neighbor that you've been fighting with next door. Show your love to your wife or to your friends at school. And they'll so soon come up to you and say, look here, Bill, what's happened to you? Now, some of them are going to come to you, and they're going to put a lot of pressure on you, and they're going to want you to go out and do some of the old things that you know are wrong. And you're going to have to say no. And God's going to test you to see. Will you really mean business? Are you ready to be all alone if necessary and go to that cross with him? And then you witness by bringing people to the meetings. You can bring your friends so that they can find Christ. You have three wonderful days of opportunity. Everybody here ought to be working and bringing people to these meetings. You have to bring people and come to the meetings. And then the fourth thing, get into the church. Get into a church where Christ is proclaimed. And if you haven't been baptized, get baptized. But get into the church and get to work for Christ. Now, I'm going to ask that we bow our heads, and I want you to pray this prayer after me out loud. Pray this prayer after me out loud. Oh, God, I am a sinner. I'm sorry for my sin. I'm willing to turn from my sin. I need your help. I receive Christ as Savior. I confess him as Lord. I want to live for him in the fellowship of his church, his name.